Hi, my name is Emma Parsley and welcome to my capstone, Luke Hay, including moms and babies with latching issues and the full experience of breastfeeding. Now, although this is my senior capstone, this project actually started all the way back in 2019. My parents, Tim and Flora, they follow the page Ray of Hope Medical Missions as an organization that they wanted to get involved with for a while, but weren't really moved to take action until they saw this ad. Now, this ad was for Sada Sawadogo, who was born in Burkina Faso on November 12, 2018. He was born as a twin and he had a cleft lip and palate. If you don't know what a cleft lip and palate is, it is when you have a split on the roof of your mouth. So the space that all of us have without cleft palates that separates our nose and mouth, he didn't have any of that, which causes many feeding issues. Now, the other factors that were involved in his birth, him being a twin and having a cleft palate are important because of the societal implications that it had in his culture. First of all, the fact that he was born as a twin was considered a curse, and his mother would have to beg for the first year of life in order to provide for him and his twin. The second being that he had a cleft palate was also considered a curse, and it was viewed to bring famine on the village. This led many individuals in the village to want Sada to be brought to the elders to be put to death. Now, because of this, Sada's family immediately contacted Ray of Hope to, in order to get an emergency visa, and just six short weeks later, he was placed in our home. We were told that our only job was to feed and care for him and to fatten him up so that he could undergo three surgeries, all to fix his cleft lip and palate. And then over that year, we learned so much about what it takes to take care of a baby like this. Then he was reunited with his family back in Burkina Faso. And now these are some updated pictures of how he's doing back with his family. Sada's story is one that turned from one of a curse to now one of hope and an example of God's provision. And I believe that his story has the power to impact many more than just his family. I've noticed that just from seeing the impact that I've already seen him have, um, but also the impression and the inspiration that he left on my heart. So when I had to choose a capstone project, Sada Smile immediately came to mind. I knew there had to be something that I could do to design for babies like him. Then I learned that these babies actually have no ability to breastfeed. So this set off some alarm bells in my mind because my mother is a postpartum nurse. So I know the importance of this, but you can even just see from this picture that there's a significant size difference between him and his twin. So this is what I wanted to focus my project on. Today, I'm going to walk you through all the steps that I went through in this process, including discovery, definition, development, and finally delivery. I'm going to walk you through each step with me. So starting out with the breastfeeding process, I have to give you a little bit of context of what breastfeeding is and what are the benefits of it and so we can understand the importance of this problem. So when a baby's born, uh, there are high levels of prolactin and progesterone in the mother's system. Prolactin is what produces the milk and progesterone is what suppresses that milk production. So once the baby's born, the progesterone levels drop and then it starts this cycle, this positive feedback cycle of prolactin and oxytocin that are produced when the mom has baby on breast. This is a visual stimulation, um, and it's very important to, in order to help with postpartum depression and to shrink the uterus, and um, in order to encourage bonding and further milk production. There's also a supply equals need cycle going on. Uh, so mom is only going to produce however much milk that is being drank by the baby. Now, some of the benefits of, breast of breastfeeding there are benefits for both mother and baby, including bonding. It is free and convenient for mother. It helps burn calories. And it helps lower the mom's risk of many health issues like breast cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, uterine and ovarian cancer. It also produces the oxytocin, which lowers the chance of postpartum depression. Now, some of the benefits for baby. There's a lowered risk of ear infections, diarrhea, respiratory infections, and meningitis. There's less chance of allergies, diabetes, obesity, and sudden infant death syndrome. There are studies show that it helps with higher brain development, so it leads to a higher IQ. And then also, the baby can be introduced to family culture through the flavors that are in the mother's breast milk. The CDC recommends that every baby is exclusively breastfed throughout six months. And then after that, throughout 12 months that it's supplemented with other foods. Now, although breastfeeding is one of the most effective ways to ensure child health and survival, 
nearly two out of three infants are not exclusively breastfed for that recommended six months. You can see just from this chart how, diff how big the difference is there. Now, breastfeeding is meant to be an un uninterrupted cycle, but for many mothers, this cycle gets thrown off and breastfeeding is stopped for reasons that are honestly out of their control. A study showed that 84% express a positive attitude towards the practice, but only 36% practice exclusive breastfeeding. Now, why would a mom stop breastfeeding if this is so important? Studies show that the perception that their infant was not being satisfied with breast milk alone was consistently cited as one of the top three reasons in the mother's decision to stop breastfeeding. This is important because it's really a misconception that a baby wouldn't be satisfied by breast milk alone. Um, but there's a lot of reasons why a mother would be led to think this, including all of the other latching issues involved. So in addition to a cleft palate, a baby could just have their behavior affect their latching issues. They could just be fuzzy, fussy or sleepy. There could be breast or nipple problems. The baby could be born prematurely or born with Down syndrome, tongue tie, or other special needs. Or just the fact that the baby's still learning. The baby just got here and they don't really know what's going on yet. So it's important that you give it the baby a few days to understand how to breastfeed. While I researched, I stumbled across many other factors that go into this problem that make it that made it a bigger and bigger problem. Some of those things include the inability to access lactation consultants for many women. Uh, this is especially prevalent in lower income areas. And also the fact that a lot of these factors come together to create a societal mistrust of women's bodies, both by the medical professionals and the women themselves. One big, one big factor that I uh, found out was that according to the World Health Organization, over 820,000 children's lives could be saved every year if all children zero to 23 months were optimally breastfed. Now, although this is a big, scary number um, and it carries a lot of weight, I wanted to see what I could do and what part I could play in lowering this number in any way that I could. So how do I narrow down this problem? So I needed to understand exactly what a new mom goes through in order to find out what pain points I can design for. No, I didn't have a child. Uh, instead, I thought creating a journey map would be a lot easier. Um, so today I'm gonna walk you through all of the things that a new mom would go through. So first, mom gets a quick meeting with a lactation consultant prior to delivery. However, this time is, is very limited and the information is easily forgotten. Then mom has her baby in the hospital and learns that he's born with a cleft lip and palate. While the parents know this will bring challenges, their stay at the hospital is fairly peaceful because it's meant for recovery and rest. Now the difficulties come when the new parents get home. They're tired, they're in pain from recovery and stressed about how to take care of this new cleft baby. And these are the moments when they really need that help, but they're lacking that professional assistance. This is when they don't have that help. So it is very easy for these parents to become overwhelmed and worried. One of the biggest sources of stress is the baby's difficulty breastfeeding as a result of the cleft. Without the ability to latch and create suction, the baby can't get the nutrients needed to grow. This leaves mom with one of two options. She can either turn to pumping or using formula. I'm gonna walk you through each of these. So starting with using a breast pump to express milk. So mom spends precious time that could be spent with her baby to pump breast milk. And this process can be painful, exhausting, and discouraging. Then she has to transfer the milk to a specialty cleft bottle to feed the baby. These bottles can get expensive and is usually an extra required step for most babies who can't use the cheaper standard bottles. Using a breast pump and specialty bottles leaves mom with many parts to disinfect. These parts are often difficult to clean and small parts can get lost easily. Also pumping regularly and in excess can create, uh, can lead to milk overproduction, which puts mom at risk for health issues like mastitis, breast pain, and blocked ducts. This is actually a huge misconception that is that a lot of women fall into is that they think that pumping more breast milk is just gonna create an extra supply that's good. And while it is nice to have an extra supply, they're not made aware of all of these health risks that are involved as well. So some of the key insights from pumping it is extremely time consuming. It is discouraging. There are many pieces needed that can get expensive, many small parts that can get lost. It is difficult to sanitize, can easily lead to overproduction. And also there are studies that show that having a pump on the breast doesn't produce nearly as much prolactin and oxytocin and provide that bonding experience nearly as much as breastfeeding. 
that ties back to the beginning where I said it's a visual stimulus uh, with having the baby on breast versus having the pump on breast. There's a big difference there. Now going into using formula. So mom makes her baby a bottle using formula. And while this is convenient, the baby misses out on all of the valuable nutrients and antibodies that breastfeeding provides. Feeding a baby formula bottles often leads to overfeeding, which causes the baby to spit up more often. This can cause irritation in a cleft baby's nose and mouth and leaves mom doubting how much her baby actually needs to eat. Formula is expensive, and once parents begin using formula, they usually become dependent on it to feed their child, and this leads to an expensive grocery bill. And because mom's milk supply isn't being consumed, new milk isn't being produced. This leads to underproduction and a further dependence on formula. So some key insights from formula. The nutrients and antibodies of breast milk are not being consumed by baby, meaning that is mis uh, missing out on those breastfeeding benefits. This is a very important for babies who are undergoing surgeries like Sada with his cleft palate. It is impersonal and lacks the level of bonding that breastfeeding provides. Bottles and formula can add up and get expensive. Feeding a baby formula can cause issues with their digestive tract and can cause irritation in the cleft baby's mouth. And it can easily lead to underproduction and a reliance on formula. Now, throughout my research, I learned about this term called targeted universalism. This is the idea that you design for the minority in order to affect the majority. So I wanted to create a very specific problem statement that would hopefully affect the majority. So my specific problem is that I wanted to design a device that creates a latch and suction for cleft palate babies. And that would affect the universal problem that would be to design a solution that would include all mothers in the experience and breast benefits of breastfeeding, regardless of underlying condition. Then I created some user personas. And now while there's a lot of information here, um, this was mainly for my research. The important things to know are that this is for Julie, who is a mom of four. Um, and this is her first child with a cleft palate and Margaret, who is a new mom, and this is her first child with latching issues. These are two examples of who I'd be designing for. Now, Julie, she, uh, she values bonding, organization, simplicity, and support. Now, Margaret also values bonding, but also education, support, and comfort. Now, one example of a real life situation of who I'd be designing for is this woman. Just a couple of days ago, she had a baby with a cleft palate. Uh, she was one of my mom's patients. And when she found out she wasn't going to be able to breastfeed this baby, she was filled with grief um, and very sad into the fact that she wouldn't be able to have this experience. Uh, but when my mom filled her in on some of the ideas I'd be exploring and trying to develop, she was overjoyed by the possibility that this could become a reality in the future. So this is an example of specifically who I would be designing for. Now, before I dove into actually designing, I created a set of goals for myself. So first of all, education, I wanted to make accurate breastfeeding information readily available and connect mom to lactation consultant to get her questions answered. I wanted to give back the bonding experience between mom and baby to encourage prolactin and oxytocin production. I wanted to make sure my design was simple, both in its overall design and the interaction with it so that I can reduce stress on mom and not add any barriers. I wanted to create a community of support by connecting mothers to each other so that all these mothers would feel less alone. And I finally wanted to establish mom's confidence in her supply and her mothering abilities. Then I researched the gap in the market. Um, so currently, like I mentioned before, there are really just two options that a mom could pursue if she can't breastfeed, and that's breast pumps and specialty bottles. I wanted to create a third option that would prioritize getting the baby back on breast. There are a few options that try to solve this problem, um, but I can, I'll get into why those options fall short. So to start out, um, this is a competitive set for the specialty bottles for cleft palates, the most popular being the Dr. Brown's bottle. The important detail from this bottle is the blue ring that I have pictured. Uh, this is what creates the uh, need for baby not to, this is what removes the need for the baby to suction, to create suction. This bottle is the most popular because of its price point and its accessibility. Uh, the other bottles, while they do a great job, they are either difficult to use or they come with a higher price point, which makes them not as favorable. This is the competitive set for the pumps that I looked at. A lot of these, um, these specific choices are all of the electric, hands-free, wire-free options. Um, 
And these were specifically what I wanted to look at because they had elements of what I wanted to include in my design. But as you can see, this convenience comes with a high price point. The other devices that I mentioned, um, there's the Lactec pump extension. This option, it attaches to an existing breast pump and allows you to feed the baby directly. However, there are a lot of extra parts here and all of these would be difficult to clean. Uh, the other option is the supplemental nursing system by Medela. This is recommended by a lot of nurses who want their patients to have that bonding experience of having the baby on breast. However, you have to pump first and fill up this this container here. And while the baby's on breast, the straws feed the baby about drip by drip. So the whole time thing is very time consuming. Um, and it really isn't that convenient. So some critical features for the success of my product. I wanted to make sure that my product was hands-free and wire-free. I wanted to have Bluetooth tracking and a partnering app. I wanted to model my product after a natural breast shape. And I wanted a limited amount of parts for easy assembly and cleaning. Then I dove into ideation. I got familiar with all of the forms that I would be creating and researched some how other products are doing it. I also bought a breast pump so I could get familiar with how the motor works, how the suction is created, and all of the pieces that are involved. And that led me to understand the set of forms that I needed to create. First, I needed to have a breast shield. I needed this to be comfortable um, when worn by the mother. I need to have a motor that would create the suction within the device. I need a space for the extra milk. I need to have some valves uh, like how the Dr. Brown bottle works uh, so that the baby wouldn't have to create that suction and so that we can make sure all of the milk moves one direction. I need to have a nipple for the baby to drink out of. And I need to have a case that fully enclosed the entire device. Then I ideated four different options for the internal mechanics of my design. Each of these options had pros and cons, and I'm going to walk you through just a few highlights of those. The first option is this bag collection system. Uh, with this option, the extra milk would be stored in the bottom, and then it would be pushed out by a separate mechanic. This design, it had a lot of number, it had a high number of components. It was not very simple to assemble or clean, and also the technology that was used was pretty complicated. Also, throughout this ideation, I realized the importance of real-time feeding, so I wanted to emphasize that in my, in my design. I didn't want the design to really focus on storing milk for later, because that would basically just make it like any other a breast pump. I wanted it to be something that really focused on the primary purpose of feeding the baby in real time and having all of that time spent feeding the baby with your baby. So this option didn't really solve that problem. This one also had the same issue of having too much overflow storage and kind of defeating the purpose. It also didn't have the technology in place to avoid any backflow. It had the chance of uh, overflowing. This option had a high number of components and also the assembly and the cleaning would not be simple. It also, uh, the technology that's involved is pretty complicated. And this ended up being the design that I went with. So as you can see, there's a little bit of storage so that if the baby's not keeping up with how fast the, the pump is going, uh, there's a little bit of leeway there, but the point of it isn't to store milk for later. Also, the mechanics are pretty simple. It is all gravity led um, and there's plenty of space for the vacuum mechanics and the battery. Then I created a prototype. I uh, made a clay model just to understand the forms that I was dealing with. And then I 3D modeled all of the parts that would be involved. And from these prototyping findings, I learned a lot. I learned that my design was way too big. It was also very unnatural. I got some feedback saying that my design looked like the Death Star or R2-D2, which is definitely not what I was going for. Um, I also noticed plenty of empty spaces or voids that I could avoid. Um, and then I also noticed a few places where I could combine pieces and remove some of the extra unneeded ones. And so that led me to this final design. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot sleeker, a lot slimmer, um, and it has a much more organic shape. Here's some more pictures of the design and all of the pieces that are involved. And moving on to the branding, I wanted to make sure that the colors um, and the overall brand was something that felt very easily approachable. And I wanted it to be simple um, and very feminine so that all mothers feel welcome to use this product. And now introducing you to Luke K. If we remember back to the beginning, 
Uh, Burkina Faso is a French speaking country. So I took inspiration from that to create this name. It means latch in French. And as you can see, there are two parts to this system and I'm gonna dive into what each of them includes, but it is the device itself and the partnering app. So now with this product, we get the baby back on breast. So we encourage that bonding experience, we encourage higher levels of prolactin and oxytocin production. And all of the time that is spent feeding the baby is spent together. Now to take a look inside of all of the pieces that are involved. To start, we have the breast shield. This is an organic shape for comfort. And then there's a top bed there for the suction piece. This is what forms the vacuum cavity in order to pull suction through the main hole of the device. There are also front grooves that would lock tightly with the case. This is the suction disc that we placed on top of the breast shield. This is what works with the motor and it flexes back and forth. It's created out of a silicone material um, and it creates that suction. This is the duck bill valve. Uh, this is one of the internal pieces and it ensures one way flow through those internal pieces. This is the inner tube. It is angled for easy flow and it does that job that I explained before of real-time feeding. So there's just enough space uh, for if the baby's not keeping pace with the device, but there's not enough that it's gonna create much storage for later. This is the disc valve. This is very similar to the Dr. Brown device. Uh, however, the opening for where the milk uh, flows out of is lowered so that we can access all of the milk easily. Uh, this is what specifically eliminates the need for suction from the baby out of the device and it fits neatly inside of the nipple. This is the nipple that I use. Uh, it's a pretty standard bottle nipple shape. Uh, for the future of this product, I would look into some other shapes that I could explore uh, that babies would respond well to. Uh, but for now, this is the universal design, but this device can easily have the nipple swapped out with any other standard bottle shapes. This is the case. It is meant to be soft and minimal with an organic shape. The whole overall design of it is supposed to be very low profile so that all of the attention is spent between mother and baby and not on the device in between them. Um, there is an indent on the case so it just snapped the breast shield, like I mentioned before. And the bumps on the side of on the inside of the device are where the motor and the battery components will be housed. So how does it work? The vacuum cavity formed by the motor is flexing the suction disc back and forth. Um, so that is what actually pulls the suction through the device. Then the milk flows down the bottom compartment and squeezing the nipple creates the pressure difference that pulls the milk through that valve and fills it up with milk. Now the pump stays running while the baby feeds in order to keep pace with the child's feeding. But if it completely fills, the pump will automatically pause until there is room. This way the baby is just continuously feeding while it is being pumped. Here's the partnering app. I'm gonna just walk through a few of the highlights of the app. So first of all, it is easy to navigate and customize your nursing session with intensity levels and mode options. The entire device will be controlled with the app so that there aren't any buttons or lights or anything flashy on the actual device itself. Everything will be controlled within the app. Also, all the statistics are recorded for convenience and to help mom keep records and track her baby's growth process. All of the milk that is pumped into the device and drank out of the device is recorded in the app so that mom can have a record of how much she is producing and how much her baby's drinking. There is a virtual assistant that connects, uh, that answers the mom's basic questions and connects her to a lactation consultant if those questions aren't answered. There are also chat pages that connect her with other moms in order to build community and support. This is where these moms can uh, post pictures of their babies and ask questions. And so through this and that virtual assistant, mom is able to have all of her questions answered um, and her confidence has grown. There are also encouraging reminders to help mom keep track with, keep on track with her feeding schedule. So now if we re revisit that journey map and we look at the options that are available, I have created a new option for these mothers. With this option, we give the bonding experience back to mom and baby and through this simple, easy to use design. Also, all of mom's questions are now answered uh, through the virtual assistant and she has a community of support of other mothers uh, guiding her through every step of the way. And now her confidence has grown and she avoids over or under production because she's able to track exactly how much she's producing and exactly how much her baby has. This way she has confidence that she is feeding her baby just the right amount um, and she doesn't have to doubt any of her abilities. And with that, that is my final project. Thank you so much.